Have you ever wondered what it takes to land a plane with no fuel at night on an abandoned runway? This is the incredible story of the Gimli Glider. On a seemingly ordinary day, July 23, 1983, an extraordinary event took place in the skies of Canada. An Air Canada Boeing 767, known by its flight number AC-143, embarked on a routine journey from Montreal to Edmonton with a planned stop in Ottawa. This aircraft, carrying 61 passengers and a crew of six, including Captain Robert Pearson and his first officer, Morris Quintal, found itself in a difficult situation halfway through its destination over Red Lake, Ontario, when the aircraft ran out completely from fuel. What makes this incident truly special is not just the unexpected turn of events, but the outcome. Against all challenges, the flight made an emergency landing at a disused military airbase in Gimli, Manitoba. And fortunately, there was no loss of life or significant physical injuries. At the heart of the accident were two key figures, Captain Robert Pearson and First Officer Maurice Quintal. Captain Pearson, with years of flying experience, and First Officer Quintal, equally skilled, found themselves at the helm of an aircraft facing a rare challenge. Together, they piloted the Boeing 767, a piece of modern aviation known for its efficiency and reliability. However, this flight was faced by an issue that would test the crew's abilities. During a routine service check, it was discovered that the aircraft's three fuel quantity indicators, or fuel gauges, were not functioning. The situation was complex. Captain Weir, involved in the pre-flight discussions, and Captain Pearson had differing recounts of the crucial conversation about the fuel system's status. It was agreed that the aircraft had been flying with these inoperative gauges from Toronto to Edmonton and back, necessitating a manual fuel check, known as a fuel drip, to determine the exact amount of fuel on board. Captain Pearson believed the issue had persisted since the aircraft's departure from Toronto, indicating that the plane had been operating under these conditions for some time. The decision to proceed under the assumption that enough fuel could be manually calculated and loaded for the journey to Edmonton would soon lead to the unpredicted sequence of events that followed. In Canada, Aircraft fueling operates on a liter-based system. Fuelers measure and charge for aviation fuel in liters. Yet pilots and those responsible for calculating the aircraft's load operate with kilograms for the fuel load calculations. This difference between volume and weight measurements was the cause of the misunderstanding. In Montreal and Ottawa, both flight crew and maintenance personnel worked together to calculate how much fuel flight needed. However, a critical error occurred. The use of an incorrect conversion factor the team mistakenly used a conversion factor of 1.77 to convert liters of fuel into pounds, aiming to understand the weight of the fuel. However, to accurately convert this figure into the necessary kilograms, a further division by 2.2 was required, a step that was unfortunately ignored. This meant that despite their best efforts, the aircraft was fueled with only half the amount of fuel it needed. Regardless of this big problem, it was Captain Pearson's decision to take off. But then, something happened that no one on board was expecting. It was just after eight out in the evening, with the sun starting to set, when the first hint of trouble came. The cockpit's instruments told the pilots that the plane was running out of fuel. The captain made a quick decision to head towards Winnipeg, hoping to land safely, but the plane was too far away and they didn't have enough fuel to make it. Soon, the right engine stopped working, and then the left did too. The pilots could now only use a few basic tools to fly the plane, like a compass, an altimeter, and airspeed indicator. They realized they couldn't reach Winnipeg anymore. They needed a new plan, fast. This was a big moment for everyone on the plane, as they needed to find a way to land without any power, relying on the pilots' skills, and a bit of luck to find a safe spot on the ground. It was 8.32 p.m. when a critical decision was made. Captain Pearson, with help from air traffic control, chose Gimli, a place just 12 miles away, for their emergency landing. Now, Captain Pearson wasn't just any pilot. He had a special skill up his sleeve, gliding. 
Yes, like those small silent planes that soar without engines. This skill was about to become very useful. Imagine this huge airplane gliding towards an old airfield. And not just any airfield, but one part of it was being used for drag racing, where families were spending their weekend in tents and caravans. But Captain Pearson's gliding skills were just what was needed. The plane, silently, made its way down to the runway, a strip of pavement that hadn't seen an airplane in a while. And guess what? They landed safely. Everyone on board was okay, and the plane stopped just in time before reaching the area where the families were. The crew quickly helped everyone off the plane, and when they checked, they found the fuel tanks were completely empty. This big airplane had just glided to safety, all thanks to the skill of its pilot and a bit of teamwork. Following the landing of the Gimli glider, an investigation was launched to explore the sequence of events that led to the fuel shortage. This inquiry uncovered a series of errors from technical oversights to communication breakdowns. As stated before, the core of the problem was the error in fuel measurement before the takeoff. This occurred mainly due to the use of the wrong conversion factor during manual calculation. Complicating this error were several issues worth discussing. First up, in Canada, aviation fuel is dispensed in liters, yet the aviation industry calculates fuel load based on kilograms. Also, discussions between Captain Pearson and the maintenance team hinted at a mutual misunderstanding of the fuel gauge issue. The belief that the aircraft could legally operate under these conditions was a misjudgment influenced by confused communications and assumptions. Adding to the complexity was the introduction of a metric system aircraft into Air Canada's predominantly imperial system fleet. This transition introduced an additional layer of potential error that was not fully accounted for. The investigation also showed a moment of critical oversight. The cockpit was overly crowded during pre-flight preparations, which possibly distracted the crew from recognizing the fuel issue. A significant finding was the lack of effective communication. Essential details about the aircraft's condition and fuel status were not adequately shared or understood among the flight crew and ground support. The Gimli glider incident was a wake-up call for the aviation industry, leading to significant safety measures and procedural changes. Chief Justice George H. Lockwood, who looked into the incident, pointed out an essential question. Did pilots truly understand the aircraft they were operating? It was noted that, over the years, as aircraft systems became more reliable, pilot training on the complexities of these systems became less comprehensive, especially with newer planes like the Boeing 767. It was clear that operational experience was vital. Yet, at the time of the incident, the pilots of Flight 143 had limited hours on this model. In response, one of Justice Lockwood's key recommendations was to expand the need-to-know training for pilots ensuring they had a thorough understanding of aircraft systems beyond just operational use. But the changes didn't stop there. Lockwood suggested rewording manuals to become easier, standardizing fuel weight units across the fleet. Moreover, the establishment of a dedicated flight safety organization within Air Canada was advised, alongside improvements in fueling procedures and other detailed enhancements. By the time Lockwood published his final report in 1985, Air Canada had already implemented most of these recommendations. The legacy of the Gimli Glider is not just a story of survival, but a catalyst for change, driving advancements in pilot training and aviation safety that continue to protect passengers and crew today.